Hello, my name is Agata Morka. I am SCOS coordinator, and I am here today to give you a short intro to SCOS. So I will talk a little bit about what SCOS is, what it is that we do, why we do it, and how we do it. SCOS, the abbreviation stands for the Global Sustainability Coalition for Open Science Services. How is it that we came into existence? Why was SCOS established? Um, so at the very core of SCOS lies a certain challenge. So we can see that there are more and more open infrastructures um, that are being created um, in the scholarly communications ecosystem. However, many of them are run by volunteers. Many of them uh, use a short-term project money and once this money is um, done, once they use all of it, um, there is the question of sustainability that comes into play. Um, of course, we are all <clears throat> we are all here for um, for an equitable and inclusive research culture. And in order uh, for this uh, culture to be uh, that way, we definitely need open science infrastructure, which is, um, which is non-commercial and which is community governed, um, because otherwise, of course, um, we risk, um, first of all, we risk that the services that this, this open um, science infrastructure offer, that they will risk stagnation, downsizing, or even worse, uh, paywalling. So they might be bought out by some commercial entities. And of course, this is not how, um, at least how SCOS imagines a thriving research, um, research culture. So with more and more, um, more and more initiatives, uh, more and more open science infrastructures being created, we see that uh, we become more dependent on that. Um, and the question of their sustainability becomes even more crucial. So SCOS, um, this is where SCOS comes in. We were established in early 2017, and our purpose was to provide a certain coordinated cost-sharing framework that would ultimately enable the broader open access and open science community to support non-commercial services on which it depends. And um, I think that our main aim is to help sustain the infrastructure uh, to support the implementation of open science. So this is uh, SCOS in a nutshell. Um, we looked very closely at the, at the question of sustainability of open science infrastructure in a report um, that we published um, recently we asked some of our um, some of the participating infrastructures, which were both small local ones and also big international ones. We asked them how much time, how how long would they be able to remain viable uh, without uh, grants or without without uh, uh, any funding. And uh, as you can see from the graph that we're looking at and now, the results were rather alarming because. <clears throat> we have almost 20% of them saying that they wouldn't be able to make it um, for more than a month. And we also have almost 50% saying that they would remain viable for more than a year only, which of course, it's not a long-term plan. Um, so here is where SCOS uh, comes in again. Um, and this is, uh, so our organization is community led and governed. And what we do is we create connections. We create, we create connections between open science infrastructures which are in need of funding and possible pledgers. So institutions around the world who are willing to support open science infrastructure. It's important to remember and to stress that SCOS itself is not a subscription or payment agency. We do not collect any money. We facilitate relationships between the infrastructures and the funders, the possible funders. Um, of course, um, we have uh, a lot of members that recognize the importance of um, what SCOS is doing and the importance of sustaining, uh, of sustaining open science infrastructure or of finding ways of sustaining open science infrastructure, because of course, 
what COS proposes is just a way of approaching this challenge, of approaching this problem is not the only way. Um, among our members, we are very happy to have some of really um, large organizations, such as, for example, the Council of Australian University Librarians, Association of Research Libraries, the Canadian Re Research Knowledge Network, LIBER, Association of African Universities, the French Ministry of um, Higher Education um, and <clears throat> Research and Innovation, or the Qatar National Library. Those are only some of the members um, that we now have um, supporting SCOS in our mission. And um, I think that um, the most important one to mention is Spark Europe, because SCOS is originally an initiative of Spark Europe. Um, last year, we were at the point where we wanted to look back at what we have achieved so far. Um, it's been three years, three, almost four years since SCOS uh, was founded in 2017. And we decided that we needed a clear direction uh, for the future. Um, and this is how the strategy 2022-2024 was created. We managed to voice uh, what, it exact, what it actually, exactly it is that we um, find to be our mission and our vision. And I think that these two, um, two sentences you see on the screen describe SCOS in a nutshell. So the mission, we create connections to sustain vital open science infrastructure. And our vision is a world where research is supported by, by a sustainable and thriving ecosystem of open science infrastructure. In the SCOS strategy, um, we focused on three main goals. So the first one is to promote the sustainability of open science infrastructure through, through funding and support. So this is primarily what SCOS does. <clears throat> we are looking for uh, available funding for open science infrastructure. Um, the second goal is about raising global awareness about the value of non-commercial open science infrastructure through advocacy and connection building. And the third goal has to do with trust. So uh, to build and maintain trust in open science infrastructure through vetting and selection. The vetting process lies at the core of SCOS. What we do is every year we have a call um, where we invite open science infrastructures to um, express their interest in becoming uh, one of the SCOS umbrella, um, umbrella infra infrastructures projects. Um, we receive many submissions and then we vet them. We find um, among all of, all of these proposals that we get, we find infrastructures that we find to be truly vital and uh, truly worth of um, support coming from the community. And we do it every year. Uh, so far, we have run three pledging rounds with over 290 institutions um, pledging from all over the world, from 22 countries. And uh, so far, we took eight infrastructures on board in three separate pledging cycles. We are very happy to say that um, we managed, through SCOS, we managed to gather almost 4 million euro to support open science infrastructure. And I wanted to tell you a little bit more about each of the cycles, um, these three cycles, which, uh, which are still open. So um, first of all, we have the pilot cycle where um, we had Sherpa Romeo and DOAJ, Directory of Open Access Journals, and DOAJ actually uh, reached its, tar it, uh, its target. Uh, which we are very happy to, to see. Whereas Sherpa Romeo is still at 50%, so they still need our support. This is of course not to say that once the infrastructure reaches its pledging target through SCOS, that it means that it will be then sustained forever and that this is, the, this is uh, their happy end. Of course not, this is just the beginning of a very, very long journey, but we are happy to be here to facilitate at least um, the first step in this long-term, uh, hopefully long-term sustainability. So speaking of infrastructures that have managed to uh, reach their target, 
In our second cycle, we had we have DOAB and OAPEN, and they also managed to reach their target just last year. We have two other infrastructures in this cycle that are still getting there. So we have open citations, which are currently, they are currently at 39% of their target. And then we have PKP, the public knowledge project, which is currently at 42%. So as you can see, there is still a long way to go, especially for these, for these two infrastructures. And last year, we also launched our third funding cycle with three new infrastructures that we took on board. So in this cycle, we support Archive, Redelic America, and DSpace. And um, since the launch, which took place in September last year, we already received several pledges that put Archive at 15% of their, tar of their target. Redelic America is currently at 8%. And D space is at 10%. So they are at the very beginning of their cycle. Um, and um, I'm sure that you will hear from all of them today um, a little bit more about what it is that they do, um, what their sustainability issues are, what kind of challenges they, they face, and how they would like to use the money that hopefully they will be able to gather through generous pledges for, for the third SCOS round. Um, we, uh, we will, uh, as I said, we will hear more from each infrastructure. Um, and if you would like to, um, to know more about how to pledge, whom to contact for pledging, please do consult our website first. This is where we have all the information. I think that that's a wonderful first step you can also always contact me as the SCOS coordinator. And if you are not doing uh, this yet, please do follow us on Twitter and also subscribe to our newsletter to keep up to date um, with where we are with pledges, what it is that the next steps for SCOS will be. Thank you.